don't ever, ever give one price. Even if they ask you, just give me one price, I never give one price. Always give options, at least two, best three. But the way you can essentially offer the same service with different options based on the six elements, the six T's. This is uh, from Ron Baker's Implementing Value Pricing. The timing, which means when we will do it, how fast we will do it, right? How quickly we'll deliver a result, first week of the month, second week of the month, by July, by the end of the year, whatever, right? So when we'll do it and how fast we'll do it, that's timing. And you can change options based on the timing. So you can have one monthly accounting engagement that you promise to have the first week of the month and one that's three weeks after the end of the month. And the ones the first week is more expensive than the one that's three weeks. And let your clients choose their options. Let them pay a premium for a better service instead of them telling you at the end, well, I expected it by the end of the first week and you end up giving them, you know, like the average price, right? Terms, if they pay up front, they should get a discount. If they pay afterwards, they should pay a premium. If they pay throughout the project, maybe somewhere in between, right? They pay with a credit card, they pay with a check. I mean, you can play with all those. Talent, you know, whom inside your company, which practitioner, which professional, which talent is going to be assigned to them? So when the client says, no, I want you to personally deliver the financial statements, right? and then you can give them a price. And then let's say you have an associate that's kind of one step below you in terms of cost and price. And you can say, if Alex, my partner, can deliver the financial statements and have a meeting with you, that will be a different price. And let your clients choose um, through pricing instead of them just expecting everything. Technology. The technology that you're using, you're undertaking, you're investing in to serve them. And also, and also, the technology that they're using. If they're using low tech, they're giving you paper statements, they're not online, they're not on the cloud, they're making you work harder. One of your options should be, you give me all paper statements, you pay this. We work with HopDoc and QuickBooks Online, you pay this. Right? <laughs> if, if, if they make it easy for you by using the technology, they should be able to get a better price and let them choose. So let them, let them pay the premium for working on QuickBooks desktop with paper statements. You know, let them get the, you know, let both of you enjoy the effectiveness and efficiency, uh, changes from, from going to the cloud and, 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 uh, and, uh, and automating. Okay. Uh, tailoring means how much are we bending over backwards? How much are we changing how we work to work with you? How much are we customizing? And based on that, that could also be one of your options. And transference is talking about knowledge. So how much is your client learning? You know, how much do they have access to, to answering questions? How much access to, you know, to the CPA, to the tax person, to the QuickBooks expert will you have? And, and based on that, you can tailor an option. So, so the power options is giving them three options. First option, which is, be, is the minimum that you're willing to work with your, for, with a client for, and also solves the minimal amount of problems or the minimum service that they need. The second option should include a few of those ones, a few of the perks. And the third option should include that bomb that they threw at you saying, I want to have unlimited access to you. Or that bomb they threw at you saying, I need response within two days. Or they bomb they threw at you where they said, I need you to guarantee your work 100% or refund the money at any point in time, no questions asked, right? So you can add that in that third option. That third option could be the one that contains all those perks. If the clients want a low price, let them sacrifice something to get it. So if within the three options you presented, um, you couldn't find exactly what they wanted. Well, break down that particular option and say, okay, you want a lower price? What are you going to take out? What, what part of the work you're going to take, you're going to do yourself and not have us do? Or you're going to do the downloading of the bank. You're going to re be reclassifying the transactions. You're going to be uploading the receipts. You're going to give me digital statements. Okay. So let them tell you how they want to pay less, right? Don't just discount it to get the business. Let them sacrifice something because you want to educate your clients from the get go, from the get go, that there are trade offs, that 
that we're you're in business to make money and you're also in business to deliver value if they want more value they have to pay more if they want less value they can pay less so that's really really important uh component of it so at the end of the day there's basically five things that your clients will uh work with in terms of deciding what your services is worth the outcome this is what they're gonna get uh, as a result of your work the time the time they're gonna save and how fast you're gonna give them what they want they don't care about the time you spend they don't care no one cares you care clients don't care okay they only care about the time they're saving and how fast you're gonna give it to them access you know will they have access to you to your knowledge to the accounting system to your staff to your knowledge base okay access now will i have access what does access mean to them guarantee am i guaranteed to have a result am i guaranteed that i won't waste my money am i guaranteed that if i'm not happy i'll, I'll get my money back and lastly price when you throw that price out, out there it is very contextual if the price somehow magically aligns with a the number they had on their head, it's a home run. If the price is lower, you, in some cases, may not get the deal because they'll be like, huh, these guys are gonna deliver all that for that price? I'm kind of skeptical of that. Believe it or not, some customers think that way. And if the price is much, much, much higher, you may get them to agree because the price itself can drive the value. But obviously you wanna, make sure that you've uncovered enough value to be able to justify the price. Now, let's do an example of options. So the same service, monthly cash basis, bookkeeping, two bank accounts, two credit cards, 200 transactions, whatever it is, right? Like I, I don't take the numbers literal, just take the example um, for option taking. So you can take the exact same service and, ups and, and, and uh, show it three ways. You can say, my basic service is going to be everything we talked about. We'll deliver it by the 15th. We'll respond your questions within five business days. And we'll have one remote call to discuss the numbers at the end of the month. Or the same service will respond any questions with, within two days and we'll deliver it by the 10th. So we're going to put you, uh, you know, amongst the first few folks that get it done. Or we can do the exact same service. Plus, we'll give you 24 uh, seven access to QuickBooks Online and automate weekly reports. We will have one one call mid month to discuss discuss the pro progress. Plus, we'll physically sit down for for a for an hour to monitor the numbers and talk about forecasts. And we'll deliver by the seventh. The exact same service presented in three different ways, and you will give three prices: three hundred, five fifty, eight forty, whatever it is. I typically what I do is I take my core price, multiply times two, and take away 10 to 20%, make that my, my middle price, take that one, multiply it times two, and, and take 10, 20%, and that's how I build them, that way they're very cohesive. There's one technique that is not on the slide here, which is having a hidden option, which is having one option that basically it's your hidden on the low side or hidden on the high side, where if you detect the client wanted more, or maybe they seem like a good client, but they want a little bit less, you have it prepared, but it's hidden. So you have it in a paper behind somewhere saying, well, we got this super great option that's always there if you need that. Or you have this, we have this you real core option that's not what I think you need, but we have this and we can still work with you. Right? We don't wanna lose the opportunity to build a great relationship with you because of price. So we're gonna give you this one, with this one uh, uh, option that's lower. Uh, in this particular example, what I'm showing is uh, what I call progressive discounted pricing. So if you have a core service that doesn't include sales tax, payroll, income tax, whatever, what you wanna do is you wanna give them a progressive discount the higher the package they get. So if they're getting your deluxe package, they will get a deep discount on additional services. And, and in many cases, that is enough to add value where they're saying, well, you know, I don't want to do taxes with you, but if I ever do, it's, it's great to know that I'll get, you know, it will be half of what it would cost normally. So that's a way of playing with additional services and the options to entice someone to go with that higher option. You can also use payment plan 
um, or payment options to discount. You can say, if you pay upfront, you will get 10% off on the deluxe package or 5% off on the basic premium package. That could also frame them to entice them into that third option, assuming that's what you want. You want them to go to that third option. And also you can play with, guar with guarantee results. So that second or third option, you know, cancel any time, full refund of the last month. Um, you know, if, if you think we failed to deliver, you pay whatever you want or don't pay at all, uh, that, that sort of thing. Um, you know, or switch to basic at any time if, if you feel we didn't deliver uh, what we were going to. So the final thoughts is if you are aware of what, how the price value our services, you control that price and you will find yourself making more money and doing more high, higher quality work. Customers like predictability. They value knowing what they're going to get for what they're going to pay for and how much they're going to pay for. And don't underestimate the power of options. In many cases, options help you or help the client decide not if they're going to work with you, how they're going to work with you. All right. And then there's a few questions here from the, from, uh, from the group here. So I'm going to try to answer some. So um, Deborah saying, my clients are spoiled. They are used to a set fee and now, and it's ridiculously low, low, I assume because that's the fee you started with. How do I transition to a value price strategy? So Deborah, first thing you have to do is you have to drop them. You have to literally tell them, Hey, we changed our business model. We are working in an entirely different way. Uh, you know, as of July, whatever it is, we will no longer work with you. Uh, I will, I'm setting up meetings to discuss our new business model and, 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 uh, and maybe you want to work with us. We're going to, we're going to work differently. We're going to work remotely. We're going to add technology. We're going to add more value. We're going to reduce our client base and, and, and focus more on them. Any of those things you can say. Um, so Deborah, I hope that, that that's useful. Rachel saying, how do I explain to a client that their books are so awful that in order to spend a lot of time fixing their books, uh, you, you won't even work for them. That's, that's a good, that's a good, uh, a good, uh, question. So in the options, when you first intake them, you have to give them an option that says, after you fix your books, this is your fee. And then, and then this is your fee, including fixing your books, right? So you, you, you have to give them the option, right? I mean, I don't know how else you can, you can do that. Um, Romantha, she's saying, I have a new firm and I have value. I have, I've been doing value pricing, but I'm not understanding what I'm doing. I guess I'm not sure if my pricing is correct. How do I make sure I'm not underpricing myself? Romantha, I will tell you something and you're probably not going to like this. You will always and forever underprice yourself. Okay. You are always worth more than what your clients pay. So all I'm telling you is keep on pushing that boundary and have deeper conversations with your clients and be less afraid of no's. The more no's you get, the more on track that you are. Okay. So the presentation is over. Um, I, I, I will, I will stay for a little bit, um, to answer more questions. Um, so I would love to answer the questions. So I know some of you have to leave, but uh, I got like six more questions here and I would love to answer them all. So if you don't mind, uh, if you stay, I'm going to stay a couple more minutes. Okay. Uh, do you have any service? Do you have any services you don't offer due to the hassle involved? Okay. And maybe that's more of a, a, a personal question. Yeah. I think it's more of a personal question. So what I, what I don't offer is any service in which the client makes me responsible for things that they should be responsible with. Like I tell a CFO, the CFO, the controller that you have got to take personal responsibility over these results. My role is to give you the support to make your own decisions. I am a consultant. I am not your manager for hire, right? So that's a really important one. The other one is I don't take any work in which it's life or death decision that if I'm not physically there to press a button, you know, the whole world will explode. So I want to make sure that I don't do that. Again, I, I push back responsibility to my clients. Um, so uh, Aaron says, how do we know what to charge how do we know it's not too low or too high? Again, Aaron, you will get better at this. Don't, don't worry about getting it wrong the first time. You always will get it wrong the first time. And again, I think I underprice myself every single time. 
every time my clients say yes, I know I underpriced it. <laughs> so that's the, that's the funny part. The funny part is every time they say no, I know I priced it right. And anytime they say yes, I know I underpriced it. So I know it sounds counterintuitive, but that's the attitude that I've taken when it comes to pricing. Um, Terry says, I am interested on implementing value pricing, but when I first start working with a client, the amount of time I will need to spend at first is hard to estimate in order to get into their accounting straight up. Do you have any suggestion on how to handle this? So Terry, the first thing I will do is never, ever, ever do free consultations, ever. You can tell, you can tell your client, hey, um, I will charge $500 to sit down with you, review your books, and give you my assessment. If you agree with going forward, I will credit the whole 500 and add it to the price of the project I gave you. But don't give free assessments. Make sure the client values the fact that you're there looking at stuff, trying to fix things. Um, Michael says, sorry, but I'm in an agreement with other clients. They are very difficult. And what you're saying sounds good, but it doesn't make sense to some of the clients because you think that you're playing games with them. Clients want a price range regardless of what you say. My experience says otherwise. I have done what you already stated and it doesn't work for the majority of people who nitpick on price. Michael, that's, that is a great comment. This is, the, this is what I will tell you, Michael. Um, I don't know if you know me or know the work that I do, but I spent the last four years building what I like to call the best QuickBooks YouTube channel in the universe. And you need to do the same. You need to spend several years building the best whatever you're great at in the universe. And when the clients come to you, you are the authority on the work. You are the authority on the price. You're not playing games. It is a privilege for the client to work with you. And that's the type of client you want to get. So Michael, I agree with you that going at this with no credibility is, or, or with low credibility or without being, let's call it a YouTube celebrity, it's harder it, 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 and harder than it is for me. But create value up front. You know, create the value, do the work, put in the work. So when clients come to you, it is a privilege for them to do business with you. Um, somebody says, do you have an engagement letter and do you include expectations? The answer is yes. I actually have a sample engagement letter in my website. Uh, so you can check that out. If you actually Google Hector Garcia engagement letter, you should get to that. I mean, not perfect, definitely adapted to your needs. Um, Kimberly says, hey, where's Kimberly's question? Ooh. I lost Kimberly's question. Oh, yes. If you're charging hourly, what is the average cost per hour for a consultant in California? Oh, man. <laughs> Kimberly, if you Google um, Intuit Rate Survey, I believe, you will land to uh, on uh, Michelle Long's study on rates, and she actually has average rates per state on that survey. So that may work. But by the way, the problem with averages is that you're trying to be the smart kid in a dumb class. Never pin yourself against others. Never, never pin yourself against others. Be unique. Don't try to match with someone else. Okay. Um, I have a couple questions, uh, but a couple more questions, but I welcome you to email me any questions you have. Hector at GarciaCPA.com. Any questions you have, if I can answer it, I'll gladly answer it. Uh, thank you very much.